I'd now like to um, introduce Jim McNerney. You know, we honored Pete Peterson earlier this evening, and now it's time to present the award that is named for Pete. Jim is the uh, CEO of Boeing Company, as everybody knows, and he's been at the helm of Boeing since 2005, overseeing an enormous operation around the globe with more than 165,000 employees. Jim chairs the President's Export Council. He serves on the boards of Procter & Gamble and IBM and is a trustee of Northwestern. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce my friend Jim McNerney, who will present the award to Inga Tulin. Jim? Uh, thank you, Steve, and thank you, uh, Carl and Maggie, for co-chairing this event and for the opportunity to pay tribute to my long-term, long-time sure. and term friend and colleague, Inga Tulin. Before I get to the part of my talk that reflects well on Inga, I thought I'd, I'd just recount a story. At the beginning, we're both hockey players, and at the beginning of the year, I said to Inga, who's going to win the Stanley Cup this year? And he said the Chicago Blackhawks, which is my team. And I, I thought it was just another form of shameless flattery that Inga's. <laughs> and I, so I said, Inga, why? And he said, well, it's very simple. There's five Swedes <laughs> on the Chicago Blackhawks, and there's only two on my team, the Minnesota Wild. And so this keen insight, this oracle-like <laughs> predictive ability is it's massive, and uh, I wanted you to all know it. <laughs> but Inga, as we all know, is a native of Sweden, a country known for having a very direct, no-nonsense approach to business and everything else in life, by the way. You know, play. <laughs> so <laughs> flattery, flattery and verbosity will not get you very far there in Sweden, or with Inga, for that matter, and, and Lord knows I've tried, a, publish, a published guide to world business cult cultures also notes that, quote, Swedes are known for their ability to secure good deals without making enemies, end of quote. As I stare at my Washington office here in front of me, not an easy thing to pull off these days. But Inga possesses all of these qualities and much, much more. Energy, integrity, sound judgment, decisiveness, and a commitment to the greater good. Always raising the bar for himself and his team. It probably started when he was a kid. And hey, no surprise, it involved ice hockey. This guy was a pretty good ice hockey player. In fact, when Inga was at a national junior development camp, for hockey in Sweden, the camp was led by one of Sweden's legendary stars, a guy by the name of Sven Tumba. All the players were doing their utmost to impress their national hero, including our hero, Inga. And Tumba actually did single Inga out with some frank, very dry encouragement, as only Swedes can do, by saying, Mr. Tulin, when are you going to start skating? <laughs> to this day, Inga pushes his 3M team by saying, when will we start to skate? And like Sven Tumba, Inga has learned to push his best players the hardest. But I think that day has arrived. Inspired by Inga, 3M is known for having some of the fastest rates of innovation deployed on a global, global basis by any company in the United States. But tonight's award recognizes his leadership far beyond that, in, that in championing the public good, specifically his and 3M's investment to promote the study of science, technology, engineering, and math. This commitment to education aligns with CED's longstanding work to ensure that our education policies at all levels prepare our students to be globally competitive. Business statesmanship is defined 
by CED as the kind of thinking and behavior that recognizes societal health as part of what it means to be a business leader. The idea that great leaders and great companies have obligations that extend beyond the next quarterly earnings report isn't something new. But some, most, just talk it. Others embed it in their DNA, or as Inga has phrased the challenge to 3M, keeping a commitment to improving our business, our planet, and everyday life. In this respect, I can think of no more fitting recipient of the 2015 Pete G. Peterson Business Statesmanship Award than Inga Tulin. Congratulations, Inga. Well, thank you, uh, Jim, and good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure for me and a big honor to be here. Um, as uh, you heard from Jim, I'm born and raised in Sweden. Uh, I'm a US citizen, and I love United States of America. <laughs> and it's a big honor for me this evening to receive this fantastic award. And uh, to be honest, I don't know really where to start. But uh, as I was thinking of it, I was uh, reflecting on a couple of things. Um, and the things are related to what I believe is the real growth engine of the global economy. And uh, we often hear about metrics like IPI and GDP and so forth, but it is a metric. The two things that is driving economy around the world are technology conversion and demographic change. Those are the two things that is driving the economy. And it's important to think about because we all, if we are in the community or if we're leading a business or part of something, we have to think about what can we do in order to provide a platform for the future relative to inspire this type of growth. And uh, if you just think about it, uh, there is in my mind uh, three things. And I think we have touched on all of them tonight. Um, the first thing is education. The second in my mind is investment in research and development. And the third one is empowering women in leadership position and in science. If I start with education, by 2020, in this country, we will face a shortage of up to 5 million educated workers. What will that say relative to our role in the world in order to lead the economy forward. STEM, the education of science, technology, engineering, and math is an important investment for the future. It's our responsibility as business leaders to encourage that and do it in many different ways. Scholarship, go out and encourage people to be part of it and make sure we invest in math and science. And it's more and more difficult if you're a science-based company to get people working in your company that can provide the talent and capabilities that you need. So we need to step up if we really believe that technology conversion will drive the future. And I'm 100% sure that that is the case. Now, the second one is investment in research and development. Investment in research and development means that you are less likely to be commoditized. And that is where United States belong. United States belong in a position to drive technology conversion moving forward. And I saw an article 
a couple of weeks ago with a headline to say that the America's science and research and development was laying on a weak ground. If you think about it for a second, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because if not, we as a country cannot compete around the world in the best technology in order to drive the world forward. And if not, the demographic change will not happen. Because the technology that will drive the enforcement of the economy will create jobs for many millions of people around the world. So it's an important element as we move forward. Now, you can also see that it's very easy to redraw investment from research and development when tough times are becoming a little bit tougher. But I think we, as business leaders, when we put on our glasses every day, we have to think about that we have one microscope and one telescope. And by doing that, I think that we should never, ever compromise the investment in research and development as we move ahead. If we do, we are thinking, as Jim said, on that quarter. We are not thinking long term. Finally, the third thing is to closing the delta on women leadership. If you think about it, it's like running an enterprise and not using the full capability in organization in your human resource pool. It's very important, and we know by facts, when you as a country can utilize more women with better education, that the productivity is better. There's something that is be, be, or below developed economy, calling developing, but that's also something that is ahead. Progressive economies. Progressive economies are more progressive and more productive because there is more females in leadership position and in science than can help to drive the economy. So when I summarize what I think about on a bigger picture of how we all can help the world moving forward and grow growth, I'm thinking about the three things I lined out here. And they are very, very important as I see it. And uh, I think it's our obligation and responsibility as business leaders to constantly think about them. Education, invest in research and development, and make sure that we get more women into leadership position and to science. And by that, I thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be here. It's uh, more than a pleasure to receive the award, and I thank you very much. Thank you.